Guitar tips, guitar tips, just the tips, just for you. Guitar tips. Hello and welcome to Guitar Tips. My name is Adam Levy. This is my weekly video blog. I post a, a new guitar tip here each and every Friday. And uh, you can tune in, you can subscribe. This is episode number 49, so we're almost at a full year now. And uh, if you're new here, you might want to go back and, and watch some of the earlier ones. They're not in any kind of uh, particular sequence, so uh, if you're just starting, you can start here and go forward. You can go back, you can skip around, uh, really whatever suits you. Uh, this week's guitar tip is... Listen to Monk. Listen to Monk. Um, in this particular case, I'm not talking about uh, Buddhism. I'm talking about Thelonious Monk, the great jazz composer and piano player. This is a record that he made. Oh, I can't find the date on here, but... Anyway, <laughs> this is a good one. I just actually picked this up recently. Um, fantastic record. Um, if you like jazz and you are not listening to Monk, I think you will be pleasantly surprised. He's uh, coming from a pretty different place uh, in jazz history. He, he's. I think he's pretty unique. He... He definitely absorbed all the music uh, that had come before him in jazz, but then he kind of like took a sidestep with that, uh, with that all that information and wisdom, and uh, instead of following the the progression of jazz that seemed to you know be happening in the mainstream, he said, "No, we're, let's take it over here." <laughs> so he wrote a whole bunch of original music, very fresh music, and. Uh, found a way to really embrace the the history of jazz and, and you know all the heritage and and beauty that had been there before but uh, not to be sentimental about it and and uh, get stuck in it but just do something fresh with it and I think that's possible at any time he did that in the in the late 40s and 50s and 60s uh, but you could do that at any time look at look at what's happening around you look at what's happened in the past and say Okay, every, everybody seems to be going over here. What if we, what if we go over here? <laughs> anyway, that's one of the things that I like about Thelonious Monk. Uh, besides listening to Monk's music, which of which there is much to listen to and enjoy, um, he also had some wisdom to share. Uh, there was a saxophone player in his band for a little while named Steve Lacey who at some point started writing down the uh, the advice and little nuggets of wisdom that that Monk would share, I guess, at rehearsals or whenever, and uh, keeping them in a little notebook. So this is something I found on the internet. This is in Steve Lacey's handwriting uh, from 1960, writing down some of the things that Monk said. So for Today's guitar tip, I'm going to take a break from telling you all, uh, you know, about the guitar and uh, share some things that Thelonious Monk said about music, about life, about his band, about uh, the business. And uh, I hope that as, as guitar, I presume you're a guitar player, since this channel is called Guitar Tips, I would guess that most of you watching are guitar players. Uh, but this advice is not specific to guitar players, but certainly could come in handy for uh, playing the guitar. So I'm going to just kind of breeze through them uh, with minimal commentary. There's quite a bunch of them. Okay. Thelonious Monks, or T. Monks Advice, 1960. Just because you're not a drummer, underlined, just because you're not a drummer doesn't mean that you can't keep time, underlined. So, right? You Just because you're not a drummer doesn't mean you don't have to keep time. You do have to keep time. Uh, pat your foot and sing the melody in your head when you play. 
Stop playing all those weird notes. Play the melody, underline the exclamation point. And uh, the way this is written, it also says stop playing all that, uh, you know, I don't want to swear here, but all that BS. Stop playing all that BS. Stop playing all those weird notes. Play the melody, underline it. And uh, actually, we've already talked about that in a previous guitar tip. Uh, make the drummer sound good. I think a lot of people presume that it's the drummer's job to make them sound good. Uh, I think it's great that Monk is saying here that uh, you can make the drummer sound good, underline. Uh, discrimination is important. Um, I don't think he's talking about race here so much as just uh, musical discrimination, artistic discrimination, what what's outside, what's inside. Um, this one I like. You've got to dig it to dig it. You dig? You've got to dig it to dig it. You dig? All reet. And that's spelled A L L R E E T exclamation point. All reet. Always know dot 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 K N O W. I don't know, but I think what Monk means is. Always know, always be certain of what you're doing. Never uh, never be wishy-washy about what you say or what you play. Always know. Um, and then there's this little parenthetical thing. It says monk, and there's an arrow. I'll show you here. I really don't know what Steve Lacey was trying to indicate with that, but uh, I'll, I'll leave it up to you to interpret that. Uh, it must always be night, otherwise they wouldn't need the lights. I have no idea what, what that is. Maybe you can tell me what you think it is. Uh, let's lift the bandstand. Underline lift the bandstand, two exclamation points. Yeah, play music that actually lifts, <laughs> lifts the bandstand. I love that. Uh, I want to avoid the hecklers. Uh, yeah. Don't play the piano part, underline. I'm playing that. Don't listen to me. I'm supposed to be accompanying you, underline exclamation point. That's great. I think when people first start to improvise and work on their ears and being actually reactive to what other people are playing, um, you know, in the beginning when you start to improvise, it's, it's easy to be kind of just stuck in your own bubble. And then the next sort of level of development is you can listen to and react to what other people are doing. But in the beginning, what I've found is a lot of times people just react by mimicking what the other person is playing or mirroring it. And I think what Monk is saying here is, you know, don't do that. Play what you're playing, I'll play what I'm playing, and then together that's going to be something special. But don't don't play what I'm playing. Um, I'm supposed to be accompanying you. I really like that. Uh, the inside of the tune, and then in parentheses it says the bridge, uh, is the part that makes the outside sound good. So that's more about composition than about improvisation, but yeah, I really like it. Uh, the bridge is a chance compositionally to kind of recontextualize the other part of the tune. And you certainly could take that into your improvisation as well. You could play a little bit and then play a different bit that makes the other bit sound uh, different through recontextualizing it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> don't think too hard here. Um, don't play everything, underlined, or every time, in parentheses. Let some things go by. Some music just imagined. What you don't play can be more important than what you do play. And what you don't play can be, let's underline, more important than what you do play. Uh, always leave them wanting more. I think that's, if you listen to Monk, even though it can be dense at times, there's, there's always plenty of space, lots and lots of space, uh, where he just takes his hands off the piano and... Uh, so he he didn't <laughs> he really did walk his talk on that one I would say uh, a note can be as small as a pin or as big as the world it depends on your imagination imagination stay in shape uh, sometimes a musician waits for a gig and when it comes he's out of shape and can't make it so I don't think he means you know doing sit-ups and push-ups I think you know it stay in shape on your instrument so that 
if you're between gigs for a while, when when you do get the phone call, you're really ready to play. So, okay. Uh, don't sound anybody for a gig. Just be on the scene. Meaning, don't tell people you're looking for work. Just hang out with musicians and be on the scene and let things happen in a natural way. Uh, those pieces were written so as to have something to play to get cats interested enough to come to rehearsal. So it's funny to, to think, you know, he's writing music just with the idea of just having something to play, anything to get people to come and rehearse. Um, he wasn't necessarily trying to reinvent jazz. He just wanted to have some new music to play, which is, that's as good a reason as any to pick up the pen and, and write some music. Um, You've got it. If you don't want to play, tell a joke or dance. But in any case, you got it. Uh, and this is apparently something he said to a drummer who didn't want to play a drum solo. He's just saying, you don't want to play a drum solo? Great. Dance, tell a joke, but you got it. Um, uh, whatever you think can't be done, somebody will come along to do it. Somebody will come along and do it. Uh, okay. A genius is the one most like himself or herself. Uh, that is really good. A genius is the one most like himself. And the last thing it says is, uh, they tried to get me to hate white people, but someone would always come along and spoil it. And that's really great. Uh, I really don't know what more I can say except listen to Monk. You can listen to his words. You can listen to his music. Uh, if if you're interested, I actually recorded last year a whole bunch of Monk music uh, with clarinetist Ben Goldberg and drummer Smith Dobson. Uh, you can find it on Bandcamp. If you go to bandcamp.com and search for Ben Goldberg and Monk, you can check it out. Um, on Bandcamp, also one of my favorite guitar players, Noel Akshote just released uh, a recording of, I think, all of the Monk songs that Monk ever wrote uh, for solo guitar and overdubbed guitars. Um, lots of people have tackled Monk's music on the guitar, on other instruments. It's beautiful music. It's a, it's a beautiful world of music. It's somewhat finite. I think there's something like 50 Monk tunes, so it could be daunting to get started in. But uh, but if you do get started, it's it's not like trying to tackle the whole real book or you know all the show tunes ever written. It is a finite world, but it's an infinite finite world. So that's this week's guitar tip. Listen to Monk, or if you're really a big McCartney fan, listen to what the Monk said. Uh, please subscribe. Tell your friends. Tell your ma. Tell your pa. Um, uh, Stay tuned and take good care.